Lake and Beauties, finally, it's here. The truth to empower women to true inner beauty through a healthy mind and inner biology. I am your hostess, Cassandra Keel, a 20 year salon owner, organic beauty product formulator, positive mind management, and clinical hypnotherapist. And I am here to help you stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. Sponsored by evokebeauty.com, evoqbeauty.com. Now, let's get to it. your organic beauty, positive mind management, and biofeedback practitioner. And the sun is out. And today's topic is all about, is a higher SPF really matter? What to shop for? Broad spectrum, toxic sunscreens. It is a messy subject and it's a confusing one. So the higher SPF myth finally explained on this episode. So obviously we're coming into springtime and no matter what time you're listening to this episode, sunscreen is always a must as women. Now, 90% of aging is correlated back to UV damage. So this topic is obviously a good one at any time of the year, but you know, this time of year we see all the newest lists of sunscreens come out on the beauty blogs and the top list from Whole Foods. And, you know, there's a lot of controversy around sun damage and sun damage toxicity due to products. And, you know, the government and the FDA has started to actually acknowledge this, which I'm so thankful. And someone that lost a brother at the age of 24 to malignant melanoma, we found out that he had skin cancer. And three months later, unfortunately, he had passed away. And just recently, having a mole, a couple moles on the back, just kind of around my bra line, just consistently itching. You know, I myself went in and got my moles checked. It is May, it is out obviously, um, sun, sun protection month. And so, you know, this topic is near and dear to my heart. And I kind of want to break down this myth around SPF, the number and how to shop. So we're going to uh, kind of go over, you know, understanding what SPF is, how and why to look for a broad spectrum, how the optimal sun radiation and how to protect yourself from the radiation, how clothing applies to all of this, And whether to pick a stick, a lotion, a spray, like what have you, how do you shop it and how do you protect yourself, your skin and the equivalence of cause and effect of aging. So you check the label and you see that they offer various SPF protection numbers and values. And you're well aware of the sun's damaging effect on skin, which we've already correlated to being premature aging and skin aging, cancer, wrinkles, sunspots, immunity suppression, all the scary stuff. So if SPF 15 is good, isn't 100 better? Why not 500? So if you automatically just think that a the higher the SPF number is better, you logically should be correct. But as we will review, the answer isn't as obvious as you may think. Now, let's try to clear up exactly what SPF is, what the differences are between the values, and how you can better pick out the best number for you so you can enjoy beautiful sun with caution, of course, and not have to worry about the potential harmful sunlight and side effects. And it's time to bust this higher SPF myth. Now, I will put a foreclosure in there. I am all about vitamin D and we all know that we need vitamin D. And I'm also well aware as biohackers have um, been kind of exploding the internet that you can actually build sun resilience. And sun is actually chi, it's prana, it's energy. And so we need 
sun. We need to get out in the sun, but we want to capture the sun in the morning and at night. And if you go back to my episode around sauna space with Brian explaining the different, you know, the red light and how healing that is to the body and how as we evolved as humans, you know, waking up in the sun and going to sleep at night with the, the red light therapy it was very healing on the body. And so if we really think about how we treat sun, having fun in the sun, you know, we're hopping in the boat or we're going outside and we're laying in at those peak hours and those blue light rays at, you know, noon or one o'clock. And that is probably the most unhealthy time that you can go and catch the sun. So I just wanted to put that out there that I am an advocate for sun and slowly building up sun resilience for skin health. Um, and that actually is builds up the immune system. So let's talk about sunscreen for skin health. You know, the sun protection factor or the SPF is what we call it, is utilized to measure a sunscreen product's protection from UVB, that's ultraviolet B rays, the type that causes sunburn and contributes to da, 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 skin cancer, right? So SPF, however, does not measure how well a sunscreen will protect you from the UVA ultraviolet A rays, which are also damaging and harmful. So dermatologists generally recommend using at least an SPF of 15 to 30 every day. Okay. So a sunscreen with SPF 15 protects 93% of UVB rays. And an SPF of 30 protects against 97%, while an SPF of 50 protects at 98%. So if we really look at the percentages there, we jumped 6% from 15 to 50. It's a very relative minor difference in protection. So very high SPF numbers, such as 50 to 100 are all a marketing ploy. And most experts believe that SPF of 30 is well enough, provided you don't skimp on it and you apply it properly in the amount and you remember to obviously reapply if you're outside and you're active and um, you know, you're out and about for a long period of time. Now, the jump from 15 to 30, I mean, again, it only gives you 4% protective increase. And then 30 to 50, only gives you a 1% increase. So it's really beyond minimal protection. And these very high SPFs can also encourage individuals to neglect other important protective behaviors like limiting their sun exposure, again, at those high peak times when we probably shouldn't be out in those blue and, and high limiting rays at noon to, to three to four o'clock. Uh, from seeking shade when we can and getting overheated or wearing sun protective clothing or hats. Now, all my ladies from the salon know that they should wear a hat to cover that beautiful hair color of theirs because sun absolutely breaks down hair color. So no sunscreen, no matter how strong, can offer total protection. So especially if the product is not Okay, here's the key, not broad spectrum. So I'm going to explain that just ahead, but by preventing sunburns, sunscreens will vary in very high SPFs, and it creates a very false sense of security. And it's just going to maybe make you think that you can stay out in the sun longer. You maybe put it on your child. And that's, that just kills me, putting on your child thinking that you're thinking that, you know, it's protecting the, the little kiddo from, you know, elevator risk from skin damage. So sun damage, UVA, can take place without any kind of skid rending um, from the UV radiation. And even the best sunscreen should be considered just one part of a very comprehensive sun protection regimen if you are a high-risk person from either, um, like myself, uh, a sibling 
directly related to me dying of skin cancer at a very young age. Um, my father was always baking in the sun and God bless him. He still does. Um, but it's just, you know, you have to understand what your family DNA is, what your epigenetics are, and then where you are, maybe you work outside or what have you, but just be protected. So I'm just going to give, you know, what you want to do is you want to look for the broad spectrum. And according, I always go back to the experts, the American Academy of Dermatology, you should look for a sunscreen that has an SPF of 30 or higher that provides a broad spectrum. So this is going to cover both the long waves from UVA and the short waves from UVB. So it protects them both and both of which affect the skin in harmful ways in which we've already reviewed. Now, as I also said, the FDA has really cracked down on all these marketing claims and established standards of testing all these over-the-counter, sold without prescription sunscreens that basically are allowing to themselves to label them as broad spectrum, but really aren't. So you'll want to look for a sunscreen labeled broad spectrum and contains the ingredients um, that, you know, really correlate with a broad spectrum. And, you know, we have our UV protect, which is absolutely a broad spectrum. And it also has vitamin D put into it for the skin and skin health. And we'll review that in a moment. And I'll share a little bit about, you know, how we built our sunscreen for skin health, as well as protection and everyday wear for all times of the year. So, to recap, the key to proper protection is the amount applied. And what I always suggest is about an ounce to a liberated area, and then also repeating it every two hours or so. We've already heard, we've always heard that as a kid. Um, but just a reminder, if you're outside and you're active. Now, most people tend to slather on either less than the required amount or too much. So just be uh, aware of where you're applying it, how you're applying it, and, and to reapply. The other piece is clothing. You know, water resistant clothing or um, clothing that doesn't allow the sun to get in. And this is especially great for little kids. Um, if you have a job or you're working outside all the time, you go on long walks, you know, it might be easier to wear proper clothes. And there's so many incredible sun protecting clothing lines out there now that are savvy and cute. And, you know, I don't have any of those in mind, but, you know, in the show notes, if you want to leave some of your favorite clothing companies, that would be awesome. So you also want to pay attention to the sensitive areas. Now, my brother's skin cancer was found on the back of his knee and which is rarely exposed to the sun. And we often find skin cancer on the body that are not exposed to the sun, especially malignant melanoma. So just remember, ladies, I'm going to put this out there, that your makeup is not considered enough protection. And I know with La Belladonna, what we sell, we do have a broad spectrum of full coverage in our minerals and it doesn't have any fillers in it. So that doesn't allow, it's a micronized um, weight in molecular weight. And so it does not, you do not lose your skincare through your face. So if there's nanoparticles in a sunscreen or in our skincare um, makeup line, the nano is going to actually most likely it, it seeps into the skin and you actually lose your coverage and you also are exposing the body burden, toxicity in the body. So that's also something to be aware of. And, you know, I always suggest to put our UV protect and then go ahead and put our minerals over it. If women don't like to wear sunscreen, I sell all of my ladies are core labelladona minerals that has four ingredients and fully protects the face from UV damage. Now, another solution is going to be our Evoke Beauty Daylight UV Protect. Now, this guy is a tinted SPF 30 plus. I am working on another formula right now that is not going to be tinted. Um, that is just incredible. Same broad spectrum. Now, the key ingredients in this guy is vitamin D, zinc, 
and shea. And it absolutely gives you antioxidant protection from environmental aggressors. It's also going to give you a firmer, brighter, luminous skin due to the antioxidant value in it as well. And we've tested it, and it gives you 97.1 UV absorption protection, which is huge. So that's going to be that short ray. It's really damaging to the skin. And then all of these beautiful natural pigments in rock blend seamlessly into most of any skin type, unless you are darker skin, obviously. And it does protect you from the UVA and UVB as a broad spectrum, which is key. So, you know, when I built this, this multi um, use sunscreen, it really, I really wanted a universal tint. And there's a lot of them out there. You can call them CC creams or BB creams or what have you. But I wanted something that was both healthy for the skin, but also blurred out like ready undertones and just matched just a very natural tone that just blended into almost all skin types. And so these zinc particulates of sunscreen absorbs, reflects, and redirects the harmful UV rays into a photo rejuvenating wavelengths for simultaneous photo protection and photo rejuvenation. So that means that you are not only protected, but the immunity of the skin is also built while you're wearing it. So again, we have 25% non-nano. So that just another thing to remember, it's non-nano, so it's not going to leak into your skin. And it's a 35 SPF. And so unlike many chemical sunscreens, zinc oxide actually protects both of the UVA and UVB and photo aging and skin cancer. So it's really safe for the whole family. And then we've got vitamin D, and this is going to contribute to healthy skin cell growth, repair, and metabolism. And it's also going to optimize your skin's immune system. So it's going to help destroy those free radicals that cause the premature aging if we don't take care of our sun properly. And then it's got some really, really light oils like sunflower seed, which is an, actually a natural UVB absorbent, a natural protectant, and jojoba oil, which is basically the same molecular size of our skin barrier and our biome and our molecular weight of our sebum. So it's really, really light on the skin. And then lasts a really nice dose of vitamin E, which is so hydrating and also neutralizes the free radical cause from UV damage and chemical stress. So it's a really beautiful product. You know, I just kind of wanted to get on and talk about all the myths around SPF and the number and the value. And I'm so glad that yes, the FDA is cracking down, but we all have to be a smart consumer. And, you know, another thing about our Evoke Beauty products is they're all food grade ingredients, wild crafted, organic, natural, totally free of any chemicals that you wouldn't want to watch out for, especially if they're going to leak into your skin. And if we remember, we want to protect our skin because 90% of aging is due to UV damage. So I hope you enjoyed this quick brief on sun, sun protection and um, what to look for in skin and sun protecting products when you're shopping the shelf. All right. All my love, all my light. Let me know if you have any questions and make sure you go to evokebeauty.com, E-V-O-Q beauty.com. Well, hello, Awaken Beauty. Thank you so much for joining the show today. Were you inspired? Please leave a comment or your own personal aha moment so others can capture exactly what you did. Also, please like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And if you're interested in high quality natural products for your hair, skin, and wellness, including organic, CBD, please visit evokebeauty.com. Again, that is evokebeauty.com, E-V-O-Q beauty.com. And until next time, darling, stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. Mm-hmm.